All right, this is the look on my face of late, 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 late. We're talking late night video making, putting these stats and crazy things together. I'm comparing each positional group of the NFC North third of the way through the season on the Bears bye week to see how teams compare six games in. So we're one third of the way. I'm going to do this. Each position group, I've already done the quarterbacks and the wide receivers. Now we're doing the edge defensive tackle later tonight. I'm going to record it tonight, which is last night for you guys. Anyways, so defensive ends right now. And then I got to do my uh, uh, challenge with my buddy Brock. That video will be out midday, and then the the defensive tackles will be out tonight. So getting all these guys, all these out to you guys uh, before the the group of games. Uh, probably should just do one three hour long video, but I think it's easier for you guys to chop it up if you just get to watch these in little segments. So right now, defensive ends, and you can go back and look at the videos from June. When I made these videos preseason, ranking each positional group where I thought they stood within the NFC North. And in those videos, I came to the conclusion the Lions were the most powerhouse. The Bears were second. Vikings third and the Packers fourth. Uh, Packers and Vikings can go back and forth on that one. And some people criticize that, but now look at how good the Vikings have been. So anyways, here's a, a breakdown of the defensive ends for each team. That was from the previous video. This is showing my rankings, how I do it. Uh... <laughs> win percentage, pass rush, uh, and then their PFF ranking to take into consideration the, the other things with the defensive end group. And this is how they scored out last year. The Bears were fourth, Vikings third, Packers second, and Lions first. Using the same format, we're now going to look at this year so far. So here we go. Win percentage. Aiden Hutchinson, absolutely a beast. And if you look at the scores the Lions are huge for a reason because of Aiden Hutchinson. Now with him gone, it's going to be interesting to see how the two-thirds of the way, the mini-buy, two-thirds of the way through the season after week 12, how this is going to look because it's going to look significantly different. Uh, Aiden Hutchinson out for the year. That's going to impact the Lions. Who are they going to go get in a trade? They're going to have to go get someone because they have not a whole lot of help outside of that. Good pass rush win percentage from Marcus Davenport. But other than that, no pressure from the rest of the team. You see a total pressure's. I added that into here, right here, instead of PFF. Total pressure is 45 from Hutchinson. The rest of the team literally doesn't do any. You look down at the Vikings and the Bears, they're getting a little bit more pressure. Jonathan Greenard is a big help for them. 29 pressures from him, but the Bears are a little more balanced with three different players getting double digits on the defensive end group. This is just your top three defensive ends. So win percentage, you can see uh, double digits from several teams, from the Lions and the Bears. Vikings have one double-digit win percentage. Pressure, PRP, that's uh, PFS pressure rating, how often they produce pressure. Aiden Hutchinson's in a whole league of his own. You want to see uh, your best players getting right around 10. Aiden Hutchinson at 14.7, it's just, it's just, he's just amazing. But he's out for the year, and that sucks for them. I really do feel bad for him. But the Bears, Montez Sweat, 7.4, 5.0 from Demarcus Walker, 6.7. That's very balanced, very balanced approach from the Bears. So that's a, that's a very good thing for them. So using my grading scale, I showed you guys in the other ones. I know this is kind of the nerdy stuff. I don't really break it down too far. I just show you where the basis of this comes from. You see their, their pass rush opportunities and everything else. This is how I grade it. And the, uh, the Vikings come out to be third, the Bears second, Packers fourth, and Lions first. One third of the way through the season. So this one looks like you would look if you were watching the game. This is how it looks. Right now the the Packers' defense is kind of the thing that struggles for them, and then just really good play calling and coaches really compensating to keep them in games. And they're really the weaker of the of the division so far. So we'll see if if that comes true when they play this week against the the Texans. We'll see if that's a, a truth statement or not. But uh, first Lions, second Bears, third Vikings, fourth Packers. Let me know what you guys think. We'll have the other ones out very shortly. Short condensed videos, just giving you guys an update of where they stand a third of the way through the season. Let me know if anything surprises you. Uh, I think people are starting to realize when they look at these videos and look at the actual stats on paper, what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the Packers. The Packers are not really as good as people talk about them. They're not, re they, they hype them up crazy. Like it is bizarre how much the media hypes up the Packers without basis for it. I mean, you look at the grades, uh, the Lions in a league of their own, 53, the Bears 42, the Vikings right behind them 39, but then the Packers down in a league of their own at the bottom, at 25 so just very interesting very interesting the way people talk about the Packers but there's your defensive tackle rankings there they are one third of the way through the season we'll see how it goes in six more weeks as we get past week 12 until uh, till then until next time da bears